In this video, I'll show off one of my favorite techniques in Reactor, which involves using a single delay module in conjunction with a integrator filter. And I'm going to use the output of the integrator filter to control the delay time of the delay module. If you've never seen an integrator filter before, it simply increases by the value at its input each millisecond. So if it has, for example, an input of 1, then the output will simply be the number of milliseconds that has passed since the last time you used the set input. So we'll be using it as a way to modulate the delay time. And modulating the delay time can give you all sorts of cool effects from slowing down the speed of the audio or reversing it or getting you like an audio scratch effect as well. So this is a pretty versatile structure we're about to build. The next thing I want to do is attach the input of the macro into the input of the delay module and to create a crossfade effect that will simply pass the input to the macro to the output if the effect is turned off. We're going to trigger this effect via MIDI so let's create a gate module and we're going to use the gate signal to trigger an envelope that controls the X input of the crossfader. So we want to make sure that the gate on is always equal to 1 using the compare module. And We don't really need an attack time because we're going to set the integrator to 0 on a new gate but when the effect ends, we want to have a little bit of release to fade back to the dry signal. Next, let's add a separator and trigger the set input of the sep uh, integrator filter to be equal to zero on a new gate. So at this point in time, when you receive a new gate, it'll set the integrator filter to be equal to zero, which will also set the delay time to be equal to zero. And since we don't actually have an input to the in of the integrator filter, it's not going to have any other effect than that. It's simply going to delay the sound by zero milliseconds, which will be exactly the same as the dry signal. So with the in input equal to zero, the sound simply passes through. So let's set the input of the integrator filter to, say, 0 0.5. And what's going to happen is that the closer the value gets to 1, the slower our sound is going to play back. I forgot to change the size of the delay buffer, so the effect only lasted for about a second or so. But if we change the size of the delay buffer to something huge, like 100,000, we can turn this effect on for quite some time. And finally, with the input set to 1, you hear that the sound stops altogether. Let's try 2. Okay, so you see we can get a pretty wide variety of effects simply by setting a constant value to the input of the integrator filter. And a lot of people have some trouble visualizing how this works at first, but the interaction is actually pretty simple. It's pretty obvious that when the there is no delay at all, that the input simply gets passed to the output and that happens when the integrator filter has an input equal to zero. 
if the input is equal to 1, then the delay time increases by 1 millisecond for each millisecond of time that is passed, meaning that you're constantly cycling through the same sample of sound over and over again, which causes the sound stop to altogether, as we just heard. And if the integrator filter is greater than 1, then the delay time ends up increasing faster than you are receiving new audio, and the sound ends up running backwards. And we can actually get some more interesting effects out of this by modulating the input to the integrator filter. So let's look at some ways to do that. My favorite method is simply to use an ADSR envelope. And we simply use standard controls for the envelope other than the fact that we're going to give it a gate value of 2. So when the envelope has a gate equal to 2, then instead of having a range from 0 to 1, it'll have a range from 0 to 2, which will give us kind of the sweet spot of values that we want to be spending sending into the integrator filter. And this will give us a pretty interesting effect. During the attack section of the envelope, the integrator will have an input ranging from 0 to 2, which means that the overall sound we're going to get during that time is going to go from the audio playing back at normal speed to slowing down, stopping, and finally playing in reverse. And during the decay section, depending on what the sustain is set to, the reverse will kind of slow down or stop altogether, and it'll hold at a certain speed until you release the MIDI, at which point it'll go back to normal speed again. So let's hear an example of that. Okay, so of course we're not limited to feeding the integrator filter with an envelope or a constant. We can use pretty much anything. Another example I like to use is a simple ramp oscillator. We can have a frequency knob and an amplitude of 2 once again. And we'll sync it so that it restarts on a new gate. Well, it's not strictly necessary. And this will kind of give us almost like a stutter glitch type of effect, but different. And you can just kind of go crazy with this concept. Another thing you can do is to modulate the ramp oscillator with the envelope. And that'll give you a whole another range of sounds. Alright, that's all the time I have for today. Guys, let me know if you have any questions.